Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Print it here. In today's video, I'm going to talk about extending our API that we created in the last video using Django REST framework to have models that have relationships in them. So basically one relationship is going to be a standard foreign key relationship, so a one-to-many relationship, and then another relationship will be a many-to-many -many relationship. And you'll see how that's handled in Django REST framework. But before I get started with the code, I just wanna remind everyone that you can go to prettyprinted.com and check out the courses I have here. Most of the courses are free, so you can check those out, see what those are about, and I'm always adding more courses or updating courses. So make sure you check that out, prettyprintit.com. So what I want to do is I want to look at the code that I have already. So if you recall from the last video, I created a serializer for my language model and I have the language model here. And then I created a language view to take in both that model and that serializer. And of course I registered a URL for that view so you can actually see it in my API. So like if I click languages, I see the two languages that I have in my database. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to update the model. So instead of having paradigm here, it's going to be referring to a paradigm table. So let me delete these two things first, just so I can, let's see, number one, delete. And then let me go back to the list number three, delete. And the reason why I'm deleting is because when I migrate this new model that I'm about to create, uh, I would be left with some corrupt data if I did not delete those because it's going to be using the old model instead of the new one that I'm creating in just a second here. So we're going to start in the models file. And with the models file, I need to add the two models that I want to add to make this example work. So the first model that I'm going to add is something called a paradigm, and that is simply a separate table for the paradigm here. So obviously it makes sense why you would put the paradigm in the language class, but for the purposes of our example here, I'm going to put the paradigm in its own class and refer to it here through a foreign key. So the language class is going to depend on paradigm, so I need to put it above, and I'm going to call this paradigm, if I can spell that correctly. And here it's from model, models.model. And these are going to be pretty simple models, so it's just going to have a name, a character field, and then I'll just put the length as 50 again, and I'll give it a stir method so you can see the name. So that should be return name. And then inside of the language class, instead of having the paradigm be models.car field, this needs to be models for in key. I almost didn't spell that correctly. Takes in paradigm and then on delete, it's going to be models. Well, this should be equals models.cascade. Okay, there we go. And then for the last model that I'm going to create, I'm going to create something called the programmer class. And as you can imagine, this will represent programmers. So like actual people writing code. So the whole point of this is you're going to be able to know which programmer knows which language, and then you'll know which language has which paradigm. And for our purposes, each language will only have one paradigm, but in practice, that's not exactly true. A lot of languages can be more than one, but we're just going to keep it very simple in this video. So models dot model, and then I'll give this a name once again. So all three classes will have names. So max length equals 50. And then I'm going to create a mini to mini field. So I'm going to call this languages, probably not the best name for our app, but it shouldn't be too confusing. So languages is going to be models dot mini to mini field and then I need to pass in the class where it has that mini to mini relationship and that's going to be language and of course I will define the stir method and return the name of the programmer. So that's it for my model. So now that I have that done I want to my or create migrations. So make migrations. And then I'm going to apply those migrations to um, the table. So migrate. Okay, so I have that done. 
And now that I have everything migrated in my database, I can go back to my code. And after the model, the next thing you have to think about, the next thing in the chain is the serializer. So the serializer will take the model and convert it into JSON for us or the other way around. So I already have the language serializer here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two more serializers, one for the paradigm and another for the programmers. So I'll call this paradigm serializer. And I'm just going to use the same serializer that I'm using for the language. So the hyperlinked model serializer, which is going to put a URL in our results. And then I need to define the meta class. The model is going to be equal in this case paradigm. So I need to import that from my models file. And then I need to import programmer as well. So here the model is paradigm and then the fields, I'll use an ID field, the URL of course, because it's a hyperlinked model serializer. And then I will also use the name. I don't think there's anything more than that. Yeah, it's pretty simple. And then I'll create a third serializer called programmer serializer. Serializers dot hyperlinked model serializer. And once again, it's going to be very similar. The model in this case is going to be programmer. And then the fields are going to be ID, URL, name, and languages. So this right here is where we're going to see something a little bit different. So I'll explain that once we can visually see it here. So I have my three serializers done. So now the next thing that I need to do is work on the views. So I have the language view already. So I want to add two more views. I want to add a view for the paradigm and I want to add a view for programmers. So I'll create one called paradigm view and I need to import things from the other modules. So uh, this is going to be paradigm serializer that I'm importing along with programmer serializer. And then from the models module or file, I need to import a programmer and the other one is paradigm. Okay, so the paradigm view is going to be view sets dot model view set because I'm using this in a pretty standard way. The query set is going to be uh, paradigm dot objects dot all. So just give me everything from the paradigm table for the query set. The serializer class um, serializer class is going to be equal to the paradigm serializer. And of course, the same process with the programmer view. So view sets, model view set, query set is going to be programmer dot objects dot all and the serializer. It's so hard for me to type serializer for some reason. But anyway, serializer class is going to be uh, programmer serializer. Okay, so with those, that is everything that I need for the views. So I've created the new models, I've created the new serializers, I've created the new views, and the last thing that I need to do is I need to create the new URLs. And to do that, I just register them on this router that I've created using default router. So I already have one for languages. I'm going to create two more, one for paradigm. So I'll just call this paradigms. So views dot uh, paradigm view and then I'll do the same thing for the programmers so programmers and then views dot programmer view and that is it so not that many changes to add in new models and we'll see what happens when I go to actually run my app so run server hopefully I didn't make any errors okay everything looks fine so I'll refresh this page. And now on my root, I see three different URLs, one for languages, one for paradigms, and one for programmers. So to add in information, I need to start with the one that has no dependencies. So that is the paradigms. I'm going to add a few. So let's add functional. Let's add procedural. And finally, let's add object oriented. Okay, so if I go back to my list of paradigms, I see one, two, three, four, functional, procedural, and object oriented. 
So now when I go to languages, this is when we're going to see something that's a little bit different. So I go to languages and I see I have a field to type in a name. And then I also see I have this drop down that was generated automatically for me to select a paradigm. And the three paradigms that are that I can select are the three paradigms that I just created. So functional, procedural, or object oriented. So if I do something like at C and put procedural, hit post, that's done. And then C++, we can say object oriented. I can do Lisp and say functional. And let's add two more. Java, object oriented, and Let's see, PHP, uh, let's use the old PHP, so procedural. Okay, so if I look at the language list, I see C, C++, Lisp, Java, and PHP, but also with the paradigm, because I'm using that hyperlinked model serializer, it gives me a link to the actual paradigm. So if I click on, say, the paradigm for Lisp, it takes me to functional. So that's the beauty of having the ID or not the ID, but the URL for the parts that are in the relationship. So now that I have languages and paradigms, the last thing that I want to add are programmers. So these are people who know particular languages. So I'm going to click that. And you already see here in the form, I have this multi-select box. So by holding down control and clicking, I can select or deselect as many as I like because one programmer can know all five languages, they can know one, they can know none, it just depends on the person. So I'll put my name in first, and let's say I know C++ and Java, so I'll post. So here is the object reflected back, and you see the structure of it. So I have the ID, URL, and name, which are expected, but then in languages, it's an array of links and those links point to the languages that I have. So if I click two, I see C++ and if I go back and click four, I see Java for the language. So now let me add in a couple more programmers. Uh, let's say Stacy. Stacy knows C, PHP, and Java. And then uh, Zoe. Zoe knows C++ and Lisp. And then finally, Billy knows just PHP. So if I go to my programmer list and look here, you see the structure of it. So you see the languages that each programmer knows. You have a link to those objects for the particular language. And Stacy has three, Zoe has two, and Billy has one. So as you can see, this takes care of a lot of things for you. Even though you're using relationships in your model, you didn't have to explicitly do anything with those relationships after you created the model. So once you were done with the model, Django REST framework took over and was able to figure out everything for you, even though you didn't have to specify anything in particular about the relationship. You just had to say you know, what fields you wanted, but other than that, you didn't have to say anything explicitly about how the relationship is defined. And that's the nice thing about working with Django REST framework. Like I was saying in the previous video, if you want things to be you know, a little more complicated or more custom for your particular use case, there are ways to do that. And perhaps I'll show you videos on how to do that. But I, I'm pretty sure that most people will get a lot of mileage out of the very uh, standard case. So you can use model view set and then for the serializers you can use something like hyperlink model serializer or just the plain model serializer and that will get you what you want so that's it for this video like i said if you haven't been to my website prettyprinted.com check it out so you can look at the courses that i have there if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you have any questions about what i covered in this video you can always leave a comment down below and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already please subscribe so thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.